Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Secrets from the Saddle, all things cycling with host Sylvie Deu, and I am super excited to bring this amazing gentleman to our interview series, to the podcast. This is Brent Barber, founder and di founder director of the Bicycle Film Festival. And if you haven't already taken in this film, go to um, go to his Instagram, Psych, uh, Bicycle Film Festival, and book your ticket today. So here's the thing. Like, I took in the first one this year um, after a number of years, and I just, I knew I had to have Brent on. So here's a little bit of his bio, and then we're going to really dive into the building and creating and founding of the Bicycle Film Festival. So in 2001, Brent Barber was compelled to start the film festival after being hit by a bus while riding his bike in New York. He turned his negative experience into a positive one and that's where it all started. Now he's done lots of things um, with regards to curating art ex exhibitions internationally and production films, but we're really gonna be focusing on the Bicycle Film Festival today. So the Bicycle Film Festival was, has been created, uh, has been celebrating bicycles through art, film, music for the last 20 years. So 20 years, this is, this is a milestone. The, the Physical Bike Film Festival spans the world up to 100 cities to an audience of over 1 million people. And I can just imagine that now it, it's all online. It is touching even more people um, internationally. So here are some of the international cities among obviously a, a um, greater number. There's Paris, London, Tokyo, um, Moscow, Ottawa City, Cape Town, Ottawa. So if you're in Ottawa, <laughs> You should be taking in the auto, the uh, Bicycle Film Festival. They just finished one in November and they will be back in January for their second festival. So welcome, Brent. I'm so excited and so proud um, and so grateful to have you here. Um, let's just dive in because I always want to hear the story first. I know you're sitting in New York and just go back to that time when, you know, you had the accident. Hopefully, thankfully it wasn't fatal because you're still here. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, just because that's where all the creativity starts, right? And I love the fact that you took a, you know, and what was a negative thing and made it totally positive. So bring us back there and let's move forward from that. Thank you for the very nice introduction. Um, yeah, I've, I've told this t story a number of times, but um, it still has a lot of meaning to me. Um, mm -hmm. I, as you said, I was hit by a bus and I really wanted to do something from that experience because as a lifetime cyclist, and it, 20 years ago, it was even worse that mm -hmm. a lot of folks don't respect cycling or understand it. So I wanted to show people how beautiful cycling is. And I think um, through the arts, um, film, visual, um, storytelling, for me, was a way to do that. And so, like, for example, I always like to talk about surfing. If you, if I told you I'm standing on a board this weekend on a beach on the water, um, it's like, oh, okay, I get that. But not until you see the moving image of it do you have this, like, kind of romantic mm -hmm. vision of it. Because it is really beautiful. Um, it's kind of hard to describe um, unless you see it. And then maybe you put some music on top of that beautiful vision of, you know, it could be like hardcore punk or it can be beautiful classical music. It all works when you're mm -hmm. surfing and different types of waves. Um, but I, I wanted it in the same way I saw surf films um, showing how beautiful surfing was and telling that story to the masses. I just felt that there was nothing like that for cycling at the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, moving forward um, over these, you know, the first year we did the festival, we had, I was surprised people came and we had sold out shows here in New York. And um, 
So I thought maybe we were onto something. So we did it a few more years. No, not, not with any ambition other than just do the festival here. But then there's like a turning point, like maybe year two or three, where mm -hmm. things, there was just a lot of uh, demand for the festival around the world. And so we started uh, slowly but surely spreading around the world. And um, so we were going to about up to 30 to 40 cities annually with events, uh, 10 to 15,000 people. And our, our largest one was 100,000 people attendees. But that was a little bit different because it was the family day at the stadium. And so I think a lot of people didn't know they were for Bicycle Film Festival, but it was still pretty awesome. I'll take awesome. the numbers anyways. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it was awesome. What that showed me, though, was that people who aren't into cycling can enjoy the Bicycle Film Festival, number one. But number two is be, again, uh, mesmerized by the beauty of the stories of cycling in different forms. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Me, I per yeah. Okay, me personally, I love all types of cycling. So if you go to see the films at Bicycle Film Festival or so see or go to any of the programs at Bicycle Film Festival, you will see that there's like BMX films, there's road cycling, you can see the Tour de France or Giro d'Italia or, you know, the, the big gravel race, whatever across, you know, South Africa or, you know, wherever it may be, or just simple stories of uh, a, a woman who formerly was from Ghana living in Amsterdam teaching mm -hmm. adult women and refugees how to ride bike for the first time, you know, Mama Agatha. I, it's a I love that one. And that, the what he was just talking, what Deb Brown was just talking about was in this year's theme. Actually, so since you're talking about that, can you talk about this year's theme? Because when we were watching it, we we're kind of like, it certainly kind of had a theme of the time, like of this year. Can you talk about how you put that all together? Um, well, the programming, first off, I'll talk about programming at the Bicycle Film Festival in general. Okay. Bicycle yeah. Film Festival is normally not just um, <clears throat> films. We have, if you came to the Bicycle Film Festival in New York or some of these other larger cities, you would have an event on Tuesday night, we'd have a panel discussion and the panel discussion oh, would be nice. women in cycling or mm. uh, art design and future of the cities. And we would bring in, you know, the founder of Strava or a rock star or the New York Times editor, or what have you. Um, and then Wednesday night would be, we have a vegan uh, barbecue here in New York where we've had gala dinners. So we have mm -hmm. free food, bring people together. There's valet bicycle parking. It's an entry point for folks. Um, you may not go to the movies, but you're curious about what bicycle culture is. We get you, you know, hooked. We are evangelic. Um, how do I say that word? We're embellizing. <laughs> We're like promoting bikes, you know, to these folks. Yeah, yeah. And packing them in. So, um, and, but those events are quite popular. And then um, Thursday night, we have an art exhibition. And our exhibition has been held at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago or at wow. Blue Galleries here in New York. Wow. Or at warehouses that, or old the old Adidas store in uh, Tokyo, which we converted into a gallery, and we've been very fortunate. We've had some of the biggest artists in the world participate, to maybe a bike messenger who's been taking incredible photos for the last twenty years. You know, so wow. side by side, you have some artwork that's worth you know half half a million dollars next mm -hmm. to snapshots by a bike messenger. So it's very community oriented. So we're very inclusive. And we're very grateful also to have established artists and filmmakers involved. And then on Friday night, we would have a concert and we've had international acts like Blonde Redhead playing to a Sunday in Hell from 1976, <laughs> uh, racing at the Perry Roubaix, uh, wow. along with a, a chamber ensemble with the film playing you know, on the screen behind. Yeah, so, yeah. And then we have films on uh, the weekend. We have programming of short films, feature length films, narrative, experimental films, music videos. So all kinds of branded content. So we have all kinds of film programming that appeal to a wide range of audiences. Okay, um, so Brent, have you done something that, to that magnitude in Ottawa or is that only just like in New York because that's where you're from? Like you have it just really access to the, the producers and the budget and Ottawa, oh. we've only shown films, you know, okay. Ottawa, okay. we we just dipped our toe in the water, so to speak. Right. Yeah. 
So most other cities, we have a program where we just show films in certain cities now, so okay. they can do it um, rather than waiting for budgets and so on. So, um, but yeah, we have not done that, but we'd love to do it. In time yeah, maybe. well, you know, just add me to your roller deck, roller decks of contacts. But, you know, I would love to help be a curator, help that in that aspect, because I had no idea how huge it could be or how yeah. huge you've made it, especially, um, you know, in New York and uh, just bringing all these like different aspects together. It's gosh. I can't wait till we can go somewhere now so you can bring that back. I bet you're hoping that that happens. Or like I asked you, I said, now that it's online, it must be a little bit easier to facilitate. And you said, no. How's it uh, been more challenging? So, you know, this COVID, obviously we know COVID hit New York City, um, mm -hmm. you know, really hard. Yeah. So we determined that at a moment, if you had, if you'd spoken to me, I would say, we, I mean, we had been, we had a, how do I say this? We had been working on Bicycle Film Festival's 20th anniversary for oh. here in New York. We were expecting 20,000 people in June. We had worked on it for over a year. We had our bands booked. We had venues oh. booked. We had sponsors locked down. And, um, we have, we're, people have bought flights from all around the world. Um, oh, we had artists coming in from Iceland or wherever else. And obviously we couldn't do it. And if you had spoken to me at any moment in <laughs> May or uh, depending on the day, I would have said, that was a great run. 20 years of Bicycle Film Festival, I'm moving on. I'm going to start another company. But um, I decided, I actually decided to keep doing it. And we, uh, this is what you seen is that we've gone virtual mm -hmm. and um so how do we do virtual obviously we can't do all those things we could engage with all those different things i've said panel discussions which we have in a few cities we've yeah. done panel discussions um but we've decided just to focus on film programming and short films mm -hmm. so the thing is is that if you went to bicycle film festival there there would be a screening that would be road cycling um, you know, you would watch, like you're into professional cycling, so you would go to that screening. Or you're into um, adventure cycling, bike packing, there may be a screening like that. Or urban bike shorts, where it's fixed gears, musically driven, it's like, it's later at night, people are partying and it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, but how do we put that all in one screening and satisfy all those different types of people? And so what I thought about yeah. doing was just telling human stories. So really focusing on the narrative, on the storytelling, right. and uh, doing a shorts program, one short program per city. It's very difficult, and we plan on going to do, doing over 100 uh, screenings in the next uh, few yeah. months. So, wow. um, so if you look at our schedule now, we have booked 20, 25, mm -hmm. and then you know, 75 more to come up into April. So um, this keeps us alive. We're staying present we're staying connected mm -hmm. uh, we're also making a little bit of money so that's good we Keep haven't made staff. income for over over a year um so and the enthusiasm and the support and it, it's been pretty very positive actually that's good um, we're working with a lot of partners now we have a lot of big companies coming at us that's always happens <laughs> you know they're like you, you try to get hold of them like you know they don't get back to you but like now they're calling us so oh that um, is a good yeah. sign yeah yeah the buzz is out there for sure you know we've yeah i don't know i came and count i think I, we've been so busy so we produced at least 10 festivals in the last six weeks or something you know so um so it's been quite we have a great team and you we do. Have, we're learning we're learning we're learning as we go um, yeah so yeah, we're we're tired, so we're we're gonna take this break. Actually, <laughs> seriously, we're gonna take, a, yes. yeah, we're gonna take, take a it seriously. <laughs> yeah. Take so, the break. Um, so the idea is to do rather than all at once. You select three programs. Um, you select. Um, you go to one, and then a, mm -hmm. a month or two later, we'll come back and do another program. So it's like a series. Um, yeah. 
And another thing that's really positive is that it's incredible is that we decided to do sliding scale because we heard from another festival that they were doing sliding scale because there's a disparity of like income right now or you mm -hmm. know so we want to make it accessible but also if people I, want to pay more so i did like that because yeah, so i'm like i'm kind of in the middle you know to watch this and i understand like you know the the funds are going to go towards staff and continuing it running because this isn't uh you know a free show but uh, and also we've been partnering with a lot of environmental organizations mm -hmm. and um and advocacy organizations um mm -hmm. in ottawa we did not normally we work with environment center but not this time but um you know all over the, the world we've been partnering with uh advocacy organizations environmental organizations it gets them money people have been the averages have been so we've asked 10 to 20 dollars yeah united states dollars and we've been getting an average of 17 dollars. so it's people have been super generous mm -hmm. um and then so next we're starting with small businesses we're partnering with uh um you know everyone should please support small businesses um you know obviously we all work with different ways with big corporations it's hard to avoid but like uh and some of them are not bad but like we're really trying to support small businesses and it's the time to do it so yes. we are partnering up with family owned or independent cinemas um oh, okay. and, uh, as well um so yeah that's that's what we've been up to we're, 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 i'm wearing a matching hat with you actually for this or cycling cap can't call this that's hat. right and thank you cap for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You should sell those. Do you sell those? Um, from Your time prices? to time, we we are we are. It's not. You know, it's funny. It's like switching gears. Like we definitely yeah. need to, as the folks have been saying, pivot, and we probably should start a store. Yes. But, yeah, um, because I'm sure you know a couple of us would pick up like swag like that. Um, just to support and actually, you know, like I, I wear this on occasion on the sunny days for my little, uh, underneath my cap, but, uh, I have a number of these and I am starting to pick them up and it's likely related. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this one, I can't tell which that looks is. like it's current, but it, I don't think it's your, this year's logo. No, I think it's, um, mm -hmm. 2018 in London. Mm -hmm. and we usually sell them at the festival so you're encouraging right. us because usually we sell them at the festival yeah and we had a an organization doing the sales for us and they sold it online yeah. and it was sold out i think before the festival started so i do know that there is a demand and also we receive oh, yeah. emails often <laughs> about asking for stuff you know, where's we, your t-shirt the t-shirt yeah. Oh yeah, I, I totally like if you you know when you go to um, order your ticket and you, you know extra you know shopping for swag you know you have that button <laughs> continue shopping you're like hmm let's see what their store has just throw a couple extra things in the cart and I don't know yeah. how easy that is because I've I've been working a little bit of shopping carts but <laughs> you probably have to have a separate store outside your tickets but it is it's a great idea and a great way to bring extra money in but uh so now i love that you guys are coming back and um let's hear you know the greatest so you've been doing this for 20 years you know you probably st started by yourself do you start by yourself as most people actually jonas makis who's a legendary filmmaker at that time he was in his 70s and he just passed last year in his 90s oh. Um, he yeah. helped me start the festival along with Anthology Film Archives here in New York. Oh, so that okay. gave us a big nudge. And the first year we had a lot of uh, really amazing talent participate or attend the festival, like some of the most important filmmakers and artists in the world. Yeah. Wow. So what is, what was your, like, I know you probably have a lot and we probably chat you know, touched on some, but your biggest challenge or hurdle that you've, that you've had over the last 20 years, like maybe this has been it, but has it been? Do you have others that you had to overcome? Oh, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure you have very, something every year comes up. You're like, 
Always. What do you mean every year, every day? This is <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, uh, but I've been the luckiest person. I've been traveling seven months of the year. And until the last couple of years, I've kind of mellowed out on it. But like yeah. seven months of the year, traveling around the world, arriving in cities, meeting cyclists, meeting amazing artists, oh, amazing gosh. people. And, uh, you know, watching bike movies and going to art exhibitions. So that it's been a good charm to life. Um, so I can't <laughs> like, complain. However, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's tons of work and um, a lot of sacrifice. <laughs> um, yeah, there's been a lot of challenges along the way. You know. Uh, Can you name one that like kind of sticks out in your mind where you're like, oh, like, it's one of those ones where, you know, maybe it's just like, like you said, you know, when COVID hit, like maybe this is the time to just start something new. You know, uh, like that feeling like you're just like this is it like i can't honestly it. the COVID thing i with all respect to the people that are having a lot of challenges um this the challenge of this has been switching gears and just working really hard yeah but it's not that difficult you know like yeah. people have a lot of challenges right now that mm -hmm. i just i think we, we do get a little bit frustrated. Like, we're also, we're way more open who we work with. We've started opening up who we work with in general. Right. Um, we're way more open. So that brings in different types of point of view, which is also good. Mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, so um, we're first and foremost an art and cultural event. We work with the Sydney Opera House or the Barbican in London. Um, yeah. And then we're working with environmental organizations who maybe never put on an event before. Mm -hmm. And also we are learning and you're going fast and you're working with people that are new but yeah. i have to say that that is nothing and everything's going super well but that is nothing compared to the, the suffering people are experiencing right now so yeah. i think we just have to stay positive keep working mm -hmm. hard i think it's a privilege to be able to work right now yes and, you know so yeah so and it's, let's just hope things change you know and yeah. I, I honestly don't know where we're going we're just going to keep doing these screenings until April. And, uh, <laughs> and then take a big break. I, I, I don't know. Like, we have a lot of uh, folks in Asia asking to do the Bicycle Film Festival. Like, um, Thailand is... Really? Is that, would that be a new a, location? Like, well, we could do the festival physically there because they don't have COVID-19 problems. Really? They, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, like... Bangkok you if we go yeah, there all you need to do is bring people in from outside that's <laughs> well, we like, already no, need been, to keep it central. we've already been to Tokyo Hong Kong Shanghai uh mm -hmm. Taiwan um Singapore we Seoul oh Korea. like physically yeah we've been to all these places oh, before wow. but we're focusing on Asia because we can go there actually oh, okay. so I that may be the later in the year right. uh yeah so they're not they don't have a COVID problem because they took care of it quickly. Um, you know, I guess people can look at that up on their own. Yeah. So, but if yeah. you and I would go to say Thailand right now, we would have to be under uh, lockdown. I think we'd be in a yeah. government dictated mm -hmm. uh, hotel for 10 to 14 days. Okay. And, uh, I checked in, they do have vegetarian food. <laughs> well, of course they <laughs> we're gonna do the festival in bangkok you have to not have to quarantine just no have to weird meat no. Yeah. <laughs> all right um so that's pretty like that's amazing and i'm sure that you have plenty of ideas to keep you going for a, a long time whether you stay you know you go back to you know on-site venues or just keep it online but i think you know more people like I appreciate having something to watch you know because it was just it was a nice you know kind of appointment to keep right because I was like and and your your customer service is amazing I just want to say oh. because I did email I think I was like maybe 10 minutes before it started I'm like did I miss it and somebody got back to me like right away like no it's just you know you know, anyways, I was one of those people like, I can't find my link. <laughs> anyways, I mean, and they were awesome. <laughs> cool. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
All right. And so you did say you're not sure where it's going. So, but how can people, okay. Talk about the process of getting your film into the film festival. Cause I know you said like, it just like, there's so many more people sending films in and it's you know, the, the videography is getting better. It's getting like, you know, things are just getting better, but how does one get one in and what do you look for specifically? I mean, we've always had great films. Mm -hmm. um, I've been like, it's from the first year we had a Sunday in hell, which is I consider one of the greatest cycling films ever. So maybe we, you should bring that back. Um, well, I feel like a Sunday in hell. It's, Sure, why not? Like, it's, yeah, it's been seen a Sounds lot. Sounds like a group ride gone bad. Like, you, you got, you're yeah. way in over your head. But Sunday in Hell is about the Perry Roubaix, which is oh. one of the biggest cycling races in the world. So it's the yeah. hell of the north. And uh, Jorgen Leth, is a great filmmaker, went there with a 40, you know, 25 cameras, big, huge crew. You couldn't get the access to a race like this now. And, um, uh, Anyhow, it's just a stunning, beautiful film. And then ever since then, I mean, we've, we're, I like to brag a little bit, but there have been eight filmmakers that I can think of off the top of my head mm -hmm. of um, film, you know, directors who have won Oscars. Not that an Oscar makes your film great or you a great filmmaker, but it's nice acknowledgement. So mm -hmm. we've had a lot of established, maybe they weren't established when they first had a film at Bicycle Film Festival, but now they are and so we've had a lot of incredibly talented people involved in bicycle film festival um how does one get their film into the festival like well, if we i a, wanted to put one in yeah we have a submission um platform it's called film freeway you can go through the bicycle film festival if i may say it's bicyclefilmfestival.com yes. go there and there's a submit a film button submit button <laughs> And then you submit your film. Um, we also have commissioned films. We've produced okay. a number of films in-house, so to speak. Um, we worked with a number of brands as well. Um, so um, also if you're an alumni at the Bicycle Film Festival, we have a number of people who've made multiple films for the Bicycle Film Festival. So like, for example, if people know who Casey Neistat is, he used to make a film every single year. And it played at Bicycle Film Festival. Um, uh, now he's like a YouTube star. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I was wondering, he sounded familiar. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, um, but, you know, we've had a couple of films produced and directed by Spike Jones, And so, anyhow, those aren't the only kind of folks we accept films from. And we've had films by high school kids. Like, the programming mm -hmm. is wide open, but the quality... Is there if there's if the story is important, it doesn't matter how much of a budget was spent on the film. If right. the story stands out and it's something that moves and um, you have something to say and you're able to articulate that in whatever mm -hmm. style and form you have, then that can work. And then there's other factors like you have 25 movies submitted about bike polo and they're all about the same. So which one do we select? You know. So, um, <laughs> So yeah, that's that's it. We watch. I personally watch almost every single film. Uh, they all they get, you know, they go through a committee, and then I I go back over at the end every film that has been said no to. I go and check it, uh, making sure um, I agree with that. And mm -hmm. you get hundreds of films, so it's very time consuming. Yeah. Um, so when is your time of the year that you do that? Well, we normally do it between January and February, or oh. January and March. Yeah. But we have, um, you know, let me look. I don't even know right now because it's, we've delayed it like three times because we don't know what's going on, you know, so. Right. Um, you just don't want to keep taking in films until you can start watching uh, some of them or? Well, films are being submitted currently. People can right. submit right now. But we just don't know when the big festival is going to happen. So March 27th is the due date. Thinking okay. like if we get the films in by, and we decide by May 1st, and if we can have a festival in New York in September. Um, okay. But I am even looking at that date now, and I'm like, that's too mm -hmm. early. And, you know, cause we set that a couple months ago thinking, oh, optimistically, there will be a vaccine. And then 
maybe we'll have a festival in the summer. But, yeah. you know, so we don't know. But I definitely recommend submitting. And um, what was the due date? And the thing is, just know that we, we don't know when it's going to happen. Yeah. March 27th. It has it. It's on the website. Hmm. I'm wondering. <laughs> I don't know if I had, have the quality or the time of putting together a bit, but it's so interesting. I was like, whoa, could it? I don't know. Are you looking for more female types videos? Is there something that you're looking to find in this pile? Like, cause I, I love that you bring up the female. Yeah. Um, you know, so this year, I mean, every year is a year that we should be focusing on social justice. So, but the festival, I like to think, if you relate it to the bicycle industry or bicycle culture in general, the festival has done a fairly good job of, you know, being quite diverse. Yeah. Um, it could do way better. We could do way, a lot more. But if you've been seeing the film festival for years, you would probably recognize that the festival, generally speaking, I mean, look, we're based in New York City, um, is more diverse than any other bike event. Uh, yeah. One area that we need, a couple areas where we need to grow and strengthen is that we need to have more content by black, African American um, <clears throat> directors. Um, we have a lot okay. of content, including um, mm -hmm. films made in Africa um, or subject matter of uh, black folks in uh, Europe or the United States, but we definitely could you know, do a lot better. But I think it's pretty strong. Um, I, I'm proud of the work that we've done in that way. And we just get the film submitted too. There's great content. Now, when it comes to women, the, we, this is where we need to really, as a whole movement, bicycle culture needs to really work on. Um, and we need to have more, you know, look, if people want cycling to grow, you need to include the other half of the world. You need to actually let them, uh, you know, s take a lead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so we have, if you saw the program in Ottawa, I would think it was, yeah, I did. It was a lot of women, yes. films about women and directed by women. And we even have over the years, a couple of our staff members who are women I, are, you know, we have leadership within the festival that are women and they've made films as well. Um, mm -hmm. But definitely something that we need to see more of, uh, for sure. That's, we need to grow. We need to see more women in, in front of the camera. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. So it's like, how could we contribute? Be a good question. Oh, I know. I'm part of a, a I'm coaching a couple para athletes who are females and, um, and that ties in, well, they're para athletes cause they're, they have a disability of sorts and it's like they're giving and getting a new, it's cycling is giving a new lease on being able to, you know, get around, be competitive, have a, um, you know, just sort of, a something of their own. I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm looking for the words, but maybe that's something. Cause I've, I've told my client or my uh, athlete, I said, it's really important that you document your journey because there are so many other people who are probably like, you know, who are in your situation that could use your motivation and your mindset and your drive and, um, you know, just your words. So, I don't know, maybe that's it. Because, uh, yeah. you know, there's Tell a- Tell the story. Tell the, there's amazing Yeah. Stories. I said, you have to start telling your story, like now, because you're just starting now and you've, you've you know, the path is, is kind of laid out. Now it's up to you to get there, you know? Um, and I'm coaching her for her first qualifier event to ride with Team Canada. So, and that's like, a lot of girls out there could probably fall in your footsteps, but um, yeah, that's a good idea, friend. I might uh, 
encourage her to start doing some videotaping that we just sort of, I don't know, put it together. <laughs> Great. Um, but, well, I appreciate taking the time with me today. I, you know what, I really appreciate you getting on here. And I don't know if you have any last words for our, you know, our listeners um, with regards to the film festival. Um, but uh, do you want to say something last minute before we shut it down? I mean, it it. Just, please enjoy coming out. I think that we've had a lot of positive feedback. Mm -hmm. um, you know, take, you know, get the snacks ready and, you know, and we're coming back to Ottawa with another program, January uh, 15th through 24th. Mm -hmm. um, I'm ready. You, you know, buy a ticket and then you can see it within that time period um, at, at your, you know, at your leisure. And um, yeah, I appreciate um, all the support from everyone who's been attending and all the great emails and feedback mm -hmm. on DMs on Instagram, what have you. Yeah. Also, like if you want to stay in touch with Bicycle Film Festival, follow us on Instagram, if I may say. Oh Bicycle yeah, for sure. Film. So we'll be adding all their social media links. Um, and like Brent was saying, when you buy your ticket, you have a week to watch and rewatch the videos, the, the films. So it's not just a one time. And I didn't realize that. But um, when you get your ticket, you, you got the start, like the launch day, and then you have a week from that day to watch it again and again and again. So I think that's a great feature that you guys added there. And um, so with that, everybody, thank you, Brent. Um, it's been an extreme pleasure. And um, make sure you get your tickets, follow them on social media, go their TikTok, their TikToks, videos are really good i've been like duetting some of them <laughs> yeah we got we got pretty hot on tiktok you know we grew yeah up. um i i love watching them because it's it's really a cool different platform um and then there's also uh facebook and instagram and their website and wherever you are you can go and get a ticket for i guess you can just watch wherever they are at the time right you can, but it's nice if people live in um, the Ottawa region, right. um, they can stick to the, because if you go, the, yeah, you can watch anywhere. Yeah. Um, so with that, thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to Secrets from the Saddle podcast. Follow uh, the Bicycle Film Festival everywhere. Follow us. Make sure you write a review, like, comment, and share this interview with others. We so appreciate you. Until next time, make sure you ride your bike and have an amazing weekend. Thank you.